Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is my June lookbook. I actually haven't filmed a lookbook the entirety of this year. I have filmed some reveals of Manx, obviously, there's quite a few of those, but I haven't actually filmed, sat down and done a this is everything that I made in this month video. It kind of, this year, <laughs> this year has kind of not gone according to plan for many many reasons but lookbooks was one of them. I have my bullet journal here with all of my makes. I made 11 things in June which is actually not too bad. Four of them were knit projects and done in a day. <laughs> So yeah, seven woven items and a lot of tops. There are a lot of tops back there. There's dresses. I mean, it's me. There's obviously dresses, but I'm surprised by the amount of tops that I've got done. So let's talk through them in order and we'll get the Cobra Corsage out of the way. This is the Vogue 9076 with the Vogue 9328 bottom half. I love this dress. I will wear this dress. I'm going to wear this dress when the weather cools down a little bit because it is long sleeve. It is fully lined as well, which is something that I I chose to do. I had been filming the sew along for it, with this combination and I have decided not to go ahead and put that one out because whilst I like this dress I'm not 100% happy with it. I love the piping detail. I really think that that helps bring out all of the actual style lines that are in this dress but I eliminated the front placket for the skirt and added in a side zip and we all know how I feel about side zips. I eliminated the skirt completely and stuck on the 9328 skirt which is a skirt that I really like and I do think it's worked but I think with all the gathering that happens in the bodice, it does need some gathering in the skirt as well. So I am going to go back to the 9076. And I'm going to use the original skirt from that one, but I'm still going to put in a side zipper because I think the closure method on that is just even, I mean, this, these buttons are under no tension, but they still do gape a little bit. So I'm also probably going to change the way that this front panel gets sewn. I'm still going to put in the button loops because these button loops actually work and this, this does completely open but you don't need it with the side zipper so I'm gonna probably sew this shut and just make these decorative buttons and button loops. I think that's going to give me a finish that I'm happier with because there was still some fudging that went into this one. Having said all that I do love this. I will wear this when it cools down. I finished it just in time for the heat but yeah very pleased with this one. I love the 9076 dress. This is my second one. There will be a third. There's definitely going to be a fourth because I have some very precious to me fabric that I'm planning on making it up in but I need to make the next wearable muslin just to double check that I love it as much as I have in my head. It's one of those ones that I'm going to persevere with. Next up is the Kiwi Cobra Corsage which I've actually not brought down with me. I um yeah for some reason I have not brought that one down with me but I do have twirls of it and I have some stills of it of me wearing it. I love that dress. I have done a pattern review for the 8577 as well as a sew along which will be listed in the description down below. I'm getting loads more questions recently about the things that I wear and talk about in videos it's always in the description down below. The only time that it won't be there is if it's not available to order because I put a lot of effort into getting the description full of links that you can follow to find the products I'm talking about. So if in doubt, have a look in the description. If I have forgotten it, which does happen on occasion, I will add it, but more often than not, the link is always in the description down below. Love the 8577. I've done a full review on it, which you can go and watch if you'd like to see all of the twirly twirly dresses. There are seven of them in total. There will be more. I'm, I am I love that pattern. I love wearing that pattern. It makes me happy. I am going to make more of them. But yeah, that was dress number two. And that was the end of the Cobra Corsage. <laughs> Next up is another piece that I've forgotten, but I have already taken a twirl of. And that's why I've forgotten them, because I have a system up in my, in my room. There's a wardrobe that all of my makes go into until they have been filmed for a twirl and then they get put into the kind of like regular top section or dress section. The Kiwi Cobra Corsage in this top I have already filmed the twirls for so they're not down here but I have got twirls of them. This is the By Hand London Anna top. It's taken me a really really long time to find a top pattern that I like that I can make from less than a meter of fabric. I have searched, I have tried different top patterns. It's taken me about two years to get to the point where it was like Oh, you know what? If I extend the Anna, it will be the top that I'm looking for. And it has been, so I have made a lot of them. Made seven so far this year. There will be more. I didn't make an Anna for a very, very long time because I had 
outgrown the size that I had traced. Luckily I had traced it so I could go back to the pattern and retrace a slightly larger size which I have done. Yeah, now I'm making up Anna's again. So I know a lot of you guys are getting very bored of seeing them. They are a staple in my wardrobe. I enjoy wearing them. They oh battery's dying two sec that's better hopefully i've not changed the frame too much um i was waffling about the anatop wasn't i yes it's one of those is this the, the kind of the, the my words are hard it's the holy grail top that i've been looking for it takes less than a meter of fabric i really like how it looks on me and i'm i have an entire two cubby holes well two and a half three cubby holes full of fabric that have been set aside because they're less than a meter i think i can get a top out of them there's too much there for me to just make bias binding with them so i will be making more by hand london annas and sorry uh, but i do enjoy i enjoy them i enjoy making them i enjoy wearing them and they're a great canvas for showing off a beautiful print like this fine leaf print that mum bought me back from Saudi Arabia. I had a tiny amount of this fabric. I think I had about 70 centimetres and it's quilting cotton so it was 44 inches wide. <laughs> centimetres long, inches wide. That's just how my brain works. So I was really pleased that I could squeeze this top out of that amount of fabric and I love how it looks. And it was the start of the leaf collection which was awesome. It was really nice to finally be getting into that. I'm supposed to be finishing it in June and I only just started it on the 7th of June. Yeah, I've made 30 things I miscounted. Next up are the knit projects because I am going in order of when I made these things. So the first one was this gable t-shirt in this black and white leafy print with these are birds of paradise and they have a very specific name and they're also I'm re-watching Farscape at the moment and they're very important in the Farscape mythology so yeah this is my Farscape top my pride top because obviously the rainbow I love that and so um, yeah very 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 happy with this and to finally get this made up I had a meter of this fabric I think it was from Jelly Fabrics I can't remember exactly where I got these two the next one as well from if I can find it I will try and list it down below but it's one of those ones where I think they had limited runs of prints and I saw this and was just like I love it I must have some yeah really pleased that this has finally been sewn up again I make a lot of gable t-shirts I wear a lot of gable t-shirts they are great for showing off a beautiful print like this because there is no like neck band or darts or panels to disturb the print which I really really love a few people have said that they wouldn't enjoy the neckline this high I don't notice it I I kind of it's, it, it because it's a really soft jersey it, it I don't feel that it's restrictive but that is something to bear in mind that it is a very high neckline but I really like this I like this vintage length sleeve as well as I said I had a meter of both of these fabrics and I have decent size chunk left not enough to make another top I wish I kind of bought a meter and a half because I could have made another top if I had but I will have enough to, to attempt to make myself some underwear which fingers crossed will be happening some point this year if I pluck up the courage <laughs> This is the other gable top that I made. Again, leafy fabric, so this is more traditional, green leaves. I saw this and fell in love with it. I actually have this exact print, but it has lemons in it and it's in the citrus collection. There was a challenge going around, the So Fruity challenge, and I think you had to have your pictures up by the end of June, I think. Let me see. Oh yeah, you had to have your pictures up by the 1st of July. I haven't made mine yet because I was concentrating on the leaves, but I will at some point be doing a so fruity piece of clothing, just not in time for the challenge. <laughs> yeah, never mind. This one's gorgeous. I love how it looks. I also have enough of left of this one to try and make some underwear with, which I will be attempting at some point, so very happy with this. Next up we have the Sheridan sweater in the larger print of the one that I'm currently wearing. This is a French terry that I got from Maiki in Poland. They definitely don't have any more of this print. I would have bought more of it if I could. I had a meter and a half of this one and I think I bought that thinking it was exactly the same scale as this one to make trousers to go with the jumper that I'd made from this one because I had three meters of this fabric and I previously made a jumper but when it arrived it was a larger scale and it kind of sat there for the longest time and I'm really glad that it's finally been made into a top again this is not going to get worn until sort of autumn time because it is very very warm but it is very very gorgeous I love the Sheridan jumper by Hey June the only difference that I do is I add a really large kind of like roll neck or turtleneck to the pattern the one that it comes with is very very narrow which is nice but i just kind of prefer how this looks and i ugh, these sleeves 
Mwah! I love these sleeves. So I'm really, really pleased with this one. And then I have the final knit piece that I made this month, and it, well, last month, and it is the Deer and Doe Sirocco jumpsuit. Now, Deer and Doe are my pattern company of choice for my Make Nine this year. So far, I have sewn up three, three from my list, and four including this one. I love the Deer and Doe Sirocco. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I have made a few changes to it. I have added an extra inch of width to the waistband so that I have the extra inch of length that I need in the torso. I had just added it to the torso beforehand, but I found that it 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 just it made it gape in in a way that wasn't great the other thing i've done as well is i have traced it a size smaller than they recommend for my measurements and for the bottom of the legs i've actually tapered it down to the very smallest size so that it really really tapers in at the ankles i think it now looks like the pattern envelope which is what i wanted i have made six of these now i still have three of them and that's only because the other ones that I made, one really just didn't like the colour combination on me. The first one that I made was the wearable muslin and it was just too big everywhere and it looked like it looked like Star Trek pyjamas, which is not a bad thing, but it wasn't what I wanted it to look like. And I can't remember what the other one was. I know I've made another one but I have got this one and the other French Terry and then the mystery fabric that I got from the Goldhawk Road which is also a green leafy one. I love this. I have worn this out. It is secret pyjamas. It looks stylish but it is so comfy. So so comfy. French Terry in super super high heat. Definitely not the one but I did wear this out on a fairly warm day and I was pretty comfortable in it. So yeah love this. Will be making more. I've got fabric in my stash for more. Yes, more Sirocco's, all of the Sirocco's. Next up, we have another By Hand London top. This time it is in the Liberty Cotton Lawn called Rumble and Raw. It is dinosaurs. I made a dinosaur top to go and watch Jurassic Park Dominion. <laughs> and I mean, you know, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do something like that? I mean, I was watching Rachel Maxey paint a faux leather skirt with Jeff Goldblum's image on it to go and watch Jurassic Park Dominion so I thought I know I have dinosaur fabric. This fabric was bought by my mum for my brother and she has made him a shirt out of it and there was a little bit left over. I got it which was very very kind of mum. Again it was one of those tiny little amounts that I really couldn't work out what to do with until I perfected this top and it was meant to be. It just fit perfectly and I love this. I've also done a video on how to fully line a top, the order of operations that I follow to cleanly and machine finish the majority of the edges in this. There's very little hand sewing in this top. There's nothing wrong with hand sewing, it's just not my favourite thing to do so I always try and work out as many ways as possible to um, not have to hand sew too much. You only have to slip stitch the lining closed once you've turned the top through on this one and there's a video for that which will be listed in the description down below. Love this, have worn this a couple of times, it goes really well with a multitude of colours so I'm very pleased I've got this one made up. The last Anna top to show you, although not the last Anna bodice, there's a dress coming in a minute. I do make a lot. Now that I've retraced it, I do make a lot of these. I like it. Uh, this fabric, I had four and a half meters of it, and I was going to do the McCall's 7945 dress with it, which would have looked awesome, except that this fabric is see through. The whole beauty of that dress is that you can wear it and it's waft around in it with one layer on in this super super high heat there is some definition because of the ties but the there's no cinching at the waist so it's a very comfortable dress to wear but you don't want to be having to wear a slip underneath of it which I would have had to have done if I used this fabric for that purpose so I cut out a dress and then I had enough to cut out a top and then I had enough to cut out this from the scraps as well I really like this I am very glad that I got this one out as well because the top the other top that I'm going to show you in a second was a total experiment I've not done that pattern before so I was pleased that I had this fabric left to make this top so I would actually get something wearable out of this fabric in case this other top fluffed up. But the other top did not fluff up. It's been a success so let me show you that one. This is the Vogue 9006. One of you guys recommended this pattern to me as a substitute or something different to the 6563 cow neck t-shirt that you all know that I love and make a lot of. The 6563 is no longer available to purchase so that and the 906 
the 9006 is. I have made both versions of this. The long sleeved one I made it with a teal cobra corsage and this is the sleeveless one which is a very different construction method. None of this is cut on the bias and there are no closure methods on this so I was a little worried that I wouldn't be able to get in and out of it and that was why I'm so glad I got the other top. I had a plan for if that happened I was going to put in a side zipper so to open it up to allow you to get in and out of it and then just zip it shut but I can wiggle this on and off no problems which kind of surprises me because I have traced out a the smallest size at the waist I have given this a lot more shaping than the pattern would have you give but I prefer it that way and I will probably always wear this tucked in. I did say when I made this one that I would consider making this into a tunic. I've actually cropped this by four inches but I could add that four inches back on and then another couple of inches and actually make this into a tunic that I would wear over leggings and a with a belt and then boots and some kind of cardigan or jumper. I think that could look really really nice and I'm not averse to giving that a try when the weather cools down a little bit because that kind of outfit in my head knee-high boots kind of screams autumn winter. Love this, I love a cow neck, I think it's one of my favourite necklines so I'm very pleased that I have a, another pattern in my stash, one with long sleeves, one with sleeveless and then one with grown on sleeves as well so really like this, expect to see more of these because it wasn't too fabric hungry either. And the final thing that I made with my four and a half metres of this fabric is the Vogue 9328. I've made this one with the fluttery sleeves this time. I made it earlier this year in a navy viscose, which I love with the long sleeves. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous dress, so I knew that I would want to make another one. This is the skirt pattern that I used on the 9076 for the teal cobra corsage dress, and I think it's a really, really nice skirt. It's skimming, but it still has quite a lot of floof at the hem, which is something that I do really, really like. And it's it's interesting that it, or it's different for me, that it's not all of the volume is coming immediately from the waist, that it kind of skims and then comes out further from there. So yeah, really, really like how this one has turned out. I fully like the bodice of this one because they want you to finish this back keyhole opening with bias binding and this neck edge with bias binding as well. For the amount of effort and faff that would go into that to get that autumn light nice and flatly it's just like you know what let's just fully line it. The other thing I've changed is I have omitted the centre front seam on the bodice uh, if you were going to use stripes or something like that that could look really effective but there's no practical reason for it to be there except for maybe because of the finishing with the bias binding that might have been why they did it but as I say I'm fully lining mine. The only thing I'm going to change for next time is I'm going to take a teeny tiny quarter of an inch wedge out of both of these front sections here. It does just gape so ever so slightly ever so, and I'm being really really pernickety about it but it's it, it when I put this one on it bugs me enough that I'm just like yeah I'm going to um just just tiny little wedge out of the pattern I think that'll solve that issue. I have fully lined the skirt of this with some acetate viscose blend that I get from Lady McElroy. I thankfully had enough of my that in my stash to do this. This fabric actually needs it. I hadn't cut the lining of the skirt out and I had finished the dress to the point that I needed to try it on to see if it was see-through and oh my gosh it was see-through so yeah needed to fully line the skirt as well. I actually like the extra swish that comes with that I think it's really really nice. I will always wear this belted because I hadn't been super super careful about print placement so I've ended up with the same kind of like a pattern repeat but it looks like I've badly pattern matched but with a belt on there it breaks that up. I wore a skinny belt for the twirls and some formal black heels but this would be really easy to dress down with like a tan belt and tan flats. Big hat which I have back there if I don't have my hair up. It's either hair up or hat not both. Really pleased with this. I will make more of this dress. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I love the cutout at the back and yeah really really happy with this one. Another by Hand London bodice. Oh battery's dying, two sex. You'll have power! I make that joke every time. So another by Hand London Anna bodice, this time on a pleated and pleated again skirt. Usually I would do a pleated and gathered skirt but trying to wrangle this viscose to behave itself was a nightmare so it was just like you know what let's just do a double block box pleat which is what I've done. There is again a tutorial for something similar, the pleated and gathered skirt up the top there if you would like to check that out. When I was doing my leafy fabric haul 
video with you guys. This was one of the last ones I showed you and I've had it in my stash for quite a while. I got it from the textile center and it had leaves on it so of course I bought it but it also had this really big wide white border. It would have been really easy to ignore that and just treated it as a narrower fabric but I really wanted to try and make the most of it. I love border prints. I find them really fascinating to try and work with. I have a lot more border prints coming up for you guys. This is one of the most basic ways of using it. So technically this is the border, the white border here, although kind of the leaves coming into it are... <laughs> It's, it's, so it, it's, it's kind of like a reverse. When I was sitting and chatting with you guys, it was just like, I know, plain bodice at the top, long skirt, well, full length of the skirt that I can get out of my width of fabric with the border at the bottom, so mirroring the two. I think that's gonna look awesome, and I'm so pleased with how this has come out. It really, really, really kind of came out exactly as I was imagining it. The fabric was 150 wide, so I've ended up with a maxi dress, which I wasn't actually expecting, but I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised by how much I like the maxi dress. The skirt has a full three meters, 10 centimeters of fabric in it, and it's super floofy. I love that as well. The only thing that I didn't do, again, was try and pat match across the back and I've ended up with the repeat of the print kind of like that. But you know what? It's in the back of the dress and I can't see it. It's not the end of the world. I did have enough fabric to pattern match if I had wanted to be careful about that, but I'm kind of hoping that I'm going to be able to get a Ogden cami out of the little bit that I have left. And I'm going to have to be careful about print placement. I think it's going to end up with the white being at the bottom and the leafy part at the top. I think that's the way it's going to look best. But we shall see. Glad that I've got that fabric to play with. It is a long, thin, narrow strip, but I, I am glad that I do have it to play with. So yeah, really pleased. Really, really pleased with this dress. There is an entire video about the making of this dress if you would like to have a look at that. Lots of uh, videos for you to check out today. Very, very happy with this. Thank it's gorgeous. I'm so so glad that I retraced the by hand London Anna bodice for my new size because it is something that I love. And finally we have my Artistic Vibrance True Bias Shelby 90s dress does 80s dress of dreams. <laughs> I had a lot of fun organizing and editing the video for this dress which again went up yesterday and you can see that one here. The title part of that video took a very very long time to do but I'm really pleased with how it came out. This dress is really really pretty. I knew I liked the Shelby dress. I made a wearable muslin last year. I ended up donating that one because I wasn't overly in love with the fabric and the print placement on the fabric kind of made it look like I tried to pattern match and it had failed and yeah it was it was always destined to be a wearable muslin to see if I enjoyed the dress and I really really did so I'm very glad that I have made this one up. This fabric is the Artistic Vibrance Visco Chalet from Lady McElroy. Mum and Dad bought this for me for my birthday two or three years ago now and I love it. I'm very very pleased with it. I think it's gorgeous. It is sheer do bear that in mind if you're buying it for a dress like this. I am always going to have to wear a slip under this dress because if I don't you will just be able to see my underwear. Regardless of the fact if I wear nude underwear you would still be able to see my underwear. I didn't have any lining fabric to line this dress. I'm kind of glad that I didn't because it's going to be a nice easy breezy dress to throw on in the super high heat if we get any of that this year because again it doesn't have any cinching at the waist. There is definition from the little tie at the back. Next time I would really like to try the crisscross tie effect I think that's going to be absolutely gorgeous and it's a hack that looks really really simple to do very pleased with this one really really love it it's going to get lots of wear over this summer very happy so five dresses seven tops and one jumpsuit I'm quite pleased with that I'm quite pleased with that I mean well, I'm always going to make a lot of dresses. I love dresses, I love wearing them, but it is nice to make these other things and you have been seeing them, all of the tops paired with my denim skirt which is the skirt portion of the 1743 Vogue pattern. That is one of the best things that I have made and it's why I think I put it in my top five for that year. It's very very versatile, goes with everything and is one of my favourite styles of skirts. So let me know in the comments section down below which one's your favourite. I think I don't think I can play favourites with any of these. There are so many successes for so many different reasons. Thankfully no fails this month, so very, very happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!